Hey guys, it's Morgan coming back to you with another weekly schlog here at Highland Cycles in Western Colorado where we show you all kinds of cool dirt bike stuff including XR600s, that's Leroy, he's way out there. Leander and Zach, angry Zach, mean Leander we're gonna call her. <laughs> over there. That's, yeah, it's different. The angry Zach is kind of like calling a big guy tiny. Mean Leander is just because she's mean. That's all there is to it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you guys like dirt bikes and you like learning about dirt bikes, stick with us. Here we go. All right, first on the lift is this lovely XR600. I think it's a 600, it might be a 650 actually. What is it? XR600R. Um, honestly, just a phenomenal motorcycle. The precursor to my XR650R. Um, this is the last, or I don't know if this is the last year, but this is the last version they made before they went water-cooled and aluminum frame for the 650R version. This is a 90s, anyway. We are gonna make this thing street legal and put a big, nasty, bad headlight on it. It's already got DOT legal tires. Um, the Kenda Parker DTs, which I really like. I like these tires. They're not the best in the woods, like wet rocks and roots and things like that, but actually they're pretty darn good um, in the desert and they're pretty good. They're actually not horrible in the forest. Uh, but uh, quick note, I learned from Jimmy Lewis run them in the hard direction. They have an intermediate direction and a hard direction. Always run them in the hard direction. They work way better. Uh, so we got our work order here. Uh, we're gonna do front brake pads. Uh, blah, 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 make street legal. Uh, so we got a headlight for it. A new petcock and fuel line. And Hey guys, it's Morgan. Let me jump in here real fast. I just wanna say, first of all, thank you so much for watching these videos. It really does mean a lot. I also wanna say that I wanna make a big push right now to getting more people to subscribe to this channel so we can spread this gospel of two wheels further around the world. I've been working really, really hard on this channel for quite some time now, and the growth has been awesome. I can't believe it. Thank you to all of you. And I wanna ramp that up. I wanna go to the next level. I want to get to 100,000 subscribers. Oh, we're still a ways off. <laughs> I know we can do it. Spread the word, guys. Share this thing around. Subscribe if you haven't. Tell people about us. Give us the big thumbs up. All that good YouTube-y, algorithm-y kind of stuff because it does make a big difference. And if we can hit that kind of level, those kind of numbers, this thing is gonna go nuts. That would be awesome. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Bark busters, so. Am I just putting new bark busters? Or maybe we're putting, I don't know. Anyway, it's already got some bark busters on it, but yeah, anyway, let's get after it. So. Let me bring you deep into the life of a motorcycle mechanic at an aftermarket shop. <laughs> uh, we get weird things. So XR600, uh, it's a 1992, says right there. Anyway, um, I was expecting a very different wiring harness go to the headlight because stock they are, and it had different, you know, that's not a stock headlight, but um, yeah, this is definitely interesting. So it's got this, funky connector here it's like off of a trailer and it's got these wires and it's got a high low uh, bulb but no high low anything on it so what i'm gonna do is our we are putting a baja designs squadron sport these things are super cool because they can run off the ac circuit because of this this is our little box. It's all sealed up now. They used to have clear. You could kind of see into it, but um, it's got a capacitor, regulator, rectifier in it, so it smooths out the power. And basically, provides DC power to the lights from the AC circuit. But they have this two-wire thing, yellow white, which needs to go to this yellow white, and they've obviously scotch locked it to keep lights on on the speedo, which we're going to leave that intact. I think what we're going to do is we're going to cut these wires and then I have uh, different waterproof connectors that we're going to use. So we're going to cut that waterproof connector off of there 
and then add the other waterproof connect anyway make this thing so it's all super pretty and super nice because i don't have one of these uh, connectors unfortunately quick thing here guys i'm gonna use this as our waterproof connector these things are pretty cool we get them from uh, washington power sports they have two pin three pin four pin whatever anyway they're pretty slick little uh, setups you need a the right crimping tool to use on these things but you put it all together and then you get a nice waterproof connector which is pretty sweet Lights work and everything works great. Uh, put a new pet cock on, new line. Uh, now I gotta do brake pads. I gotta make sure, I gotta figure out why this, this isn't working. Uh, Cause it's got a bulb. Anyway, I'm gonna check the bulb. It's got a brake light switch and everything on it. So hopefully it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, we'll bring you back in, but we got that headlight working. Those, uh, those little waterproof connectors are really cool. You gotta have, the one crimping tool is the one thing you really gotta have uh, so you crimp it correctly, but other than that, it's super simple. All right, guys, so I got the XR600 all done. Uh, it really wasn't that interesting. Um, the brake light, tail light situation was just that the bulb was burnt out, so I put a new bulb in it. The brake light didn't work. Um, it's just been, it's just old. The pressure switch, switch had gone out. So to test that, all I did was just clip the two wires and then touch them together. And the brake light lit up, so we're good to go. So put a new switch in it, um, put new brake pads on that bike, put uh, Bark Buster shields on it, and um, yeah, it's all ready to rock and roll. So street legal, ready to go. Sheets, sheets are you working on that 525? Look, at, look, at, look how upset he's angry. I don't know what he's angry about. <laughs> Angry about the 525. Are you angry about the 525? <laughs> How long have you been working on this, Zach? Uh, too long. Does it feel like a month? It does. It feels like a month to me. It always feels like a month when Zach's working on anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, this thing has been here forever. Um, uh, quick note on why it was here forever. First of all, it was blown up. So we got the cylinder replated and okay, great. And then uh, we ordered the wrong cam chain. We, as in Leandra, ordered the <laughs> wrong cam chain. But actually it wasn't totally your fault because uh, we put the year make model into the search, got the parts fish up and it just listed one. It turns out there's multiple lengths of cam chain you can get for this. So if you are rebuilding an RFS, make sure you count the cam chain links and get the right one. It's, uh, I mean, it's not the end of the world. It just takes a lot longer. Then uh, we had a little Zach issue um, with <laughs> this timing. Where's the part? Oh, here we go. So we noticed that it wasn't sparking, right? Wasn't that why we got a stator? Customer brought the stator in, it was draining the battery, it wasn't charging the battery. Okay, so customer brought a stator in, it was, so anyway, Zach takes it all apart, take cam chain off, and doesn't notice, and I don't know exactly how he didn't notice this, but the, the flywheel looked like that. Lots of tin or whatever you want to call that missing. So we had to have find a flywheel for it and they don't exist uh, from KTM. So we found one on eBay uh, that looked brand new. So it's all good to go. So Sheetsy Poo's putting this thing all back together and our fingers are crossed that we're gonna hear it fire up here shortly and it's gonna run good. I'll bring you back in when that thing lights up. <laughs> yeah! Zach Sheets. <laughs> Got to run. It even sounds good. It's all rattly, just like they're supposed to sound. With RFS motors, I swear, are the loudest motors ever. <laughs> sounds good. Did you, did you start with the button? Or did you have to I kick it? Try the button. Oh, Zach kicked it. That. I'm so proud of Zach. Look at him go. <laughs>
Oh, people wonder why he's angry, Zach. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's good to have another 525 back on the road, though. I do like those bikes. I don't love the RFS motor. Um, it's a it's a great motor. It runs really well. All that good stuff. It's generally pretty durable. But when and if you have ever had one that you wore out or put lots of hours on, you know what I'm talking about. When you start to wear one out, they are a nightmare. All right, guys. Next on the lift is the uh, 300 XCW of Mr. Wes Dietz from No Pro Heroes. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description for his website or for his YouTube channel. Uh, but you got to check out Wes. His stuff is awesome. He's also on Facebook and Instagram as No Pro Heroes. He's a good dude. Uh, we are doing wheel bearings. I've shown wheel bearings before, but I just want to talk about this one. Uh, Wes put some all balls wheel bearings in sometime this spring. Uh, he brought us the bike. The rear wheel bearings were junk and the front were wiggling. And when we checked it out, um, he actually didn't have the axle installed correctly. It's... I've got a video on that too. I might actually just show you guys that again on the the correct way to install the wheel. But anyway, uh, we loosened everything up, tightened everything up, and it solved the problem. But now they are wiggling again. I don't know. You guys can't probably see that. It's just a tiny bit. Um, but we're going to upgrade to the SKF setup because the SKF bearings, seals, and spacers are way nicer. And I'll show you um all that again i think i've shown all those before but anyway gonna get this thing off and then we'll show you how to properly install the front wheel on a motorcycle which amazingly enough is something that a lot of people get wrong all right guys so let's see if i can show you you can see yeah you can see the rust right there uh, on the inner spacer on uh, this side a little bit worse looking not bad but uh, you can kind of, I don't know if you see it on the camera that well, but you can kind of see some rust in there on the inner race too. So the one downside to keeping your bike super clean is that uh, even if you're careful not to spray uh, water into bearings, it gets in there. Let's just be honest. Like, it just happens. It's part of the deal. You can see some rust on the outside. Uh, and this is no fault of Wes's other than the fact that just, you know, so if you want to keep your bike super clean you end up getting water places you don't always want it seals on things don't keep all the water out because to be that water tight they would keep the wheel from spinning <laughs> very well you can see lots of rust right there uh, if you reach in here actually feels it's funny it actually feels like it it turns well which is good but you can just you can almost hear it in the thing too it's just kind of and kind of a funky sound it's not real smooth and if i move it i can actually feel it just a little bit that way and let's see yeah this one's actually not here and so it's just not oh there we go they're not horrible uh honestly wes caught this before they got really bad so that's good uh because what happens if you don't catch it before it gets really bad is you ride all things you know break loose and you can ruin a hub uh front wheel bearings going back can be bad for you you go over the bars but anyway whatever so i'm gonna pop these things out we'll grab the skfs and show you those kind of in detail it's been a while since i've shown those all right now that these are out you can really see how here there you go here you see how rough they are um that's just old grease but there you go so there are time this one the seal stayed in that one the seal popped out as i drove it out so part of a wheel bearing job is doing a lot of cleaning so because rust is a funny thing right so, <laughs> um it likes to creep it's a cancer right it just like will creep through things so all the rust and stuff that's in here we want to get all that out even though this is aluminum and it doesn't um aluminum doesn't really rust it oxidizes and also this is rust from those bearings so obviously it can get everywhere so if it's in the grease and whatever it can like get onto the bearings and all that so same with the hub we're going to do a really good job of cleaning these things up and i'll grab those skfs guys okay, so here is the kit oh there we go huh. sorry i gotta do that here 
Uh, you want to see what the inside of a disgusting silencer looks like, stay tuned. Uh, but here's what the uh, SKF wheel bearing setup looks like. New spacers and they're Cerakoted. They're really nice. They're new, nice and hard. Um, the seals don't tend to chew into them, so that's nice. Um, High-end seals. I'm not sure who, or excuse me, high-end bearings. Not sure who actually makes their bearings for them, but they're nice. Um, we'll definitely pop these seals out, make sure there's plenty of grease in there. And then here's one of the cool things. These seals are pretty sweet. So um, they go in like that, and this is on the outside. And this seal, actually, you can see it um, uh, rotates with the wheel. So, well, this rotates like that uh, around as the wheel turns, and then this stays put on here. Um, and that helps to not groove these as much. Obviously, this seal is still spinning around this thing, but um, anyway, SKF seals are really good, so these seals are obviously really good. They tend to work really good. Um, we've got a set on Wes's rear wheel. I don't know if you can kind of see the green in there. Uh, so now we're going to put them on the front. I've got them on the front and back of pretty much all my bikes, I think, now. Uh, they're really lasting and holding up a long time. Kit is like 65, 66 bucks for everything, which actually isn't bad for a good set of bearings, seals, and spacers. So, uh, anyway, got everything cleaned up. Ended up taking some Scotch Brite to it. Got that all cleaned up. Got the wheel, the hub cleaned up. Now we're going to install everything. Um, show you kind of how we're just going to bang them in place, but I'll show you the couple other little things we do to make sure everything uh, stays nice and clean. All right, guys, so getting ready to install these. I took the seals out, put a little extra grease in there. I always do that. But now I'm going to take, this is assembly lube. Also works as kind of an anti-seize. We're going to put a little bit on the outside. And that's going to help these things. Um, they're not going to really drop in necessarily a lot faster or anything like that. But it's going to make sure that there's a nice film of um, anti-seize, grease, oil, whatever you want to call it, to help keep it from corroding in the wheel. flip her over guys and after we flip her over we're going to take the inner spacer I'm going to drop that down in and I'm going to line it with a little bit of the lube just to make sure that everything stays nice and happy with no corrosion drop it down set it right over that spacer. That's why I like the spacers to go inside like that. Allows you to drop that, or the, the outer spacers have the, the come inside the, the bearing. Allows you to drop that inner spacer over it and it helps hold it in place. More. Final spacer. There we go. Wheel bearings installed, ready to rock and roll. Uh, now let's go over how we install a wheel on a dirt bike. Start by, let's clean this up really good. I wanna make sure every time you put this axle in, it's really nice and clean. Again, helps with corrosion, all that stuff. Also helps with the install and making sure everything goes like it's supposed to go. I like to take a little bit of this Z-Max lube. It's kind of a clear lube that uh, it's like goes on like an aerosol, but then sets up like a grease. All right, now I'm gonna slide the wheel in. To make your life easy, just grab a flat blade screwdriver and pry those brake pads open just a little bit. Lift it up in place. Axles should slide right through. You know, you might have to tap things and move it, but it should pretty much go in uh, by hand. So there we go. You can see a little bit. Take the soft end of this and just kind of. You can see see how it moves you want that you want it to be loose in there because 
if it's not, that's when problems can arise on install. So anyway, it's nice and loose. We can just take it and push it over like that. Take our nut. We need to clean this actually a little bit. Take a little bit of lube on that too. And don't worry, it's okay to have lube on it. You've got pinch bolts and all this stuff to help hold it on. It's not going to come out because it's lubed up. Now, take this, try to start it by hand if you can, but don't want to strip these threads out. It's a bummer. <laughs> all right, now take our 17. I'm just gonna go. And let me show you something. This is what you're looking for. As you're tightening that down, you wanna see that axle move. That means that everything's doing what it's supposed to do. So you wanna see that axle move. Now that, by doing that and seeing it move, it pretty much means that the forks are aligned. Um, but a lot of bikes, especially bikes with some hours on them, they're not gonna do that. So after you get that tight, and some, like in this case, it's not really super tight because it's just spinning the axle. But if it's on your other you know, bike, if it gets nice and tight, stop there. We still haven't touched these pinch bolts. Now, uh, just if you can, if you have a stand, it's nice. If not, it's all right, you can pull it off a stand. Um, you know, if you have a lift, it, you, know, you can leave it chalked up, but whatever, get the thing off the stand, pump the brake back up. Now we're gonna, like that. That helps make sure that everything's aligned. Then we're going to tighten down our pinch bolts. And there we go, guys. Front wheels installed. No more wiggly wiggly. And uh, we know that the forks are straight. Everything's going to work like it's supposed to work. So there we go. On to the next job. Next on the lift is the venerable CRF50 slash XR50. Uh, in case you guys were wondering, yes, they are identical. <laughs> XR50, CR50, same thing. Um, but this one has been sitting for five years, and uh, the owner, uh, the guy who purchased it after five years of sitting, uh, tried by uh, putting new gas in the tank, that tank, uh, which is cool. Uh, he put a new spark plug in it and all that stuff, but guess what? Still didn't run. Um, I am sure that this miniature carburetor is disgusting. So we're going to pull that sucker off. Whoa. We're going to pull that sucker off and um, see if we can't get this thing fired up. I think it's probably going to be pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let's get that thing off. Let's take a look in it, and then we'll put it in the uh, ultrasonic. All right. Got the little booger off. <laughs> yes there we go there's the disgustingness guys that anyway i'm gonna take a picture of that put it on our instagram and facebook because that's disgusting well, anyway i'm gonna take the rest of this apart drop it in the old ultrasonic let it cook for about 45 minutes at about 60 degrees celsius and uh then we'll come back all right guys there we go pull them out of the ultrasonic got a Kind of finish cleaning them off with a little bit of brake cleaner. This one looks like it might need some elbow grease too. But you can see it's much better already. I'm going to go get my brushes and go over to the parts washer and really, really dig in and get these clean. These things have been sitting for way too long. All right, so... I cleaned it off with a brush and a little bit of emery cloth, and then I put it back through the the um, ultrasonic, and now it's starting to look good. I'm pretty happy with it. But now I got to pull these jets out. Clogged. Oh yeah. A little bit of brake cleaner, some air. Probably still, yeah, still clogged. So let me show you a little trick. All right, so get yourself some wire strippers of some kind. Pop that off. Get a little bit more. There we go. Then you can just pull one strand out and use this as your jet cleaner because a lot of times jet cleaners are too big. To go through some of these small jets because in these little bikes these jets are really small 
All right, let's see if this little guy's gonna fire up. We got key on, switch on, choke on, gas on. One kick. Ooh, almost one kick. And choke on. Running good. Uh, might be leaking a little bit of gas. We'll have to see. Uh, gonna button it all back up and take it for a nice long ride. Put Next on the lift, guys, is this 2022 YZ450 FX. Uh, I've already taken it this far apart because you gotta take it this far apart. Well, you don't have to take the wheel. I eh, might have to take the wheel off. Anyway, whatever. Um, but you gotta get the tank and all this other stuff out of the way so that you can get the shock off because <laughs> we were gonna lower this bike just a little bit. Uh, this is our friend Ian's. Uh, bike, and Mr. Ian Leeming, he works for Enduro Ranch. Um, I will try to remember to put his info down here um, to give him a ring if you ever want to be guided or coached around here. He's an amazing uh, riding coach and guide for our area. Uh, he's really, really good, uh, but he likes his bikes to be just a little bit lower. So we're going to be using uh, the Zeta Lowdown Outer Kit. I don't know which one. I think it takes this one. We ordered both because this is for a smaller uh, shaft. Anyway, whatever. Um, <clears throat> and we're just going to be dropping a little bit. I'll show you how that works. It's actually pretty cool if you're, uh, you know, you're not trying to do it like super fancy. Uh, to truly lower this thing and get it perfect, you'd want to take the thing apart, go inside, make a shim, uh, then get the right spring and all that stuff. But Ian is a little heavier than um, what this bike would call for anyway. Not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, so we're going to be preloading the spring just a tiny bit more by doing this, which will actually be good for him. So, uh, yeah, anyway, you got to take the tank and all this stuff off to get this shock off because it's got to come out the top up here. Uh, so now I'm going to take these bolts off, get the shock out, and show you, how you guys, show you guys how we're going to lower it. The way these things work is they're pretty cool because they're a two-piece. So we don't have to take the shaft out. All right, so we got our nitrogen needle clear through. He's got the Schrader valve out of it. We're just going to come in here. So we come in right here. Nice and easy so we don't bend the needle. So this is another brilliant thing about a bladder. Now, if we had the piston style, we would have to drain everything and then reset the piston height and all that. Um, but since it's a bladder, when we push this down, it's gonna maybe deform the bladder just a tiny bit more, um, but then we'll air it up and it'll all be the same. So again, one more reason to have a bladder <laughs> in your uh, shock. It makes me... There we go. Alright, so now we push that down. Gotta pop that circlip out. Alright, circlip out. Now we're gonna take this, take the O ring off of it. The writing goes up. This is they are different shape. There's a chamfer on that, so the writing goes up. We're gonna come around here, put that together, take our O-ring, we can stretch it over. All right, got our O-ring. Now we're gonna ease this down into place. There we go. Now we got that down below where the circlip goes. Got that down, everything's good. Now I'm gonna put this cap back on. Now we're gonna repressurize this to 150, 160, anyway. I'll check, I think it's 150 pounds. Um, I'll check and make sure we get it to the right pressure. Uh, and then we're gonna reinstall. So that's all you have to do. Like I said, if you have a bladder, that's all you have to do because it'll, like I said, pushing that down in there is gonna deform that bladder just a little bit. 
But when we put the pressure back in there, it'll get it to the right shape, basically. Maybe it'll be a little bit off, but um, it's not gonna mess with anything because it's uh, a bladder and not a piston. If the piston, you have to take it all apart, reset that height and all that stuff. So um, win one for the bladder again. All right, guys, got the FX all uh, lowered. Just a little bit, not a ton. Uh, and I'm gonna let Ian fiddle with his forks. I'm not sure, I mean, it'll go, he's got a little bit of room he can go on that, but um, I'm gonna let him deal with that. But we also installed an M59, a used M59, but in very good shape. And then a brand new uh, Shinko Cheater, a uh, big giant fat one. What is this thing, a 120, 140? I don't know, it's huge. The, uh, yeah, 120, 118 with an NM18 325 rear nitro moose. The front's got nitro moose in it too. So there we go. YZ450 FX all ready to rock and roll. All right, guys, that's the end of the week and the end of the schlag. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching this far. Punk Rock Club, you know who you are and you know that I love you more than everyone else. I love the Punk Rock Club more than the rest, the rest of you guys. Sorry, um, that's all there is to it. If you want to join the Punk Rock Club, all you got to do is watch to the end of every one of these videos. Maybe comment with a rock and roll sign. That would be awesome. I love you guys. Get out, spread the gospel of two wheels. And as always, you know what I'm going to say? I desperately hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on, but way more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes!